Daniel and today we will now do question 3 of step 2, 2020. So this sequence of positive real numbers is said to be unimodal if there is a value. So this basically means that the values just go up to the top and then down like a mountain. So that's how it works basically. So show that in any sequence with this, prove that any sequence of positive real numbers with this property is unimodal. Now we can square both sides of the equation u r minus 1, u r minus 1 squared, where then u r squared. And then u r minus 1 would be u r minus a, u r minus b, less than u r squared. And then if we can put a plus here, it doesn't change because since a is less than b, we can still guarantee the result. Then we are officially done. Now, a sequence is shown by this. Anyways, so just a bit of trivia here. This is called a Horodam sequence, which is a generation of, I mean, generalization of the Fibonacci sequence where you just put all the coefficients and you hook how. Got that? So that means the Pell sequence and that Pell sequence is in, but the Super Fibonacci sequence isn't. Okay, so we have u r minus alpha u r minus one equals to alpha u r minus one minus alpha u r minus two, and then you have so basically this is just a recurrent mechanism, and then you will have alpha r minus two u two minus alpha u one by the recursion method because basically you have something which goes from r to r minus one you can go all the way down so basically you it's like falling you have fell one meter you can fall all the way down same with induction if you can jump up one meter you can jump up all the other meters well maybe induction is not true but this induction reduction by falling on the coefficients is occurs to be true every time probably saving induction if we have true proofs so unless you gerrymandered the results okay so we have u r squared minus u r minus one r u r plus one equals to u r squared minus u r minus one two a u r minus alpha squared u r minus one and then you have u r minus alpha u r minus one squared by the you know the recursion formula for the Horodam sequence and so this is where Horodam sequences come in handy once you can simplify you can simplify a lot further possibly down to the first term now hence show that the sequence consists of positive terms and is unimodal ha huh. now this is a difficult proof so if we have u3, let's calculate u3 just for the heck of it, you will have, <clears throat> this should be an interesting one, 2 alpha u2 minus alpha squared u1. So this means if we have u squared is greater than alpha u1, u, it's greater than 2 alpha squared u1 minus alpha squared u1 equals to alpha squared u1, which is actually greater than u2, if we had just proven. And then we are done. In the case u1 equals to 1 and u2 equals to 2, ur is this. Now, we have ur. <coughs> well, this is a difficult one. So, uk equals to 2 alpha... 3 minus k alpha k minus 2 plus 2 k minus 2 alpha k minus 3 minus alpha squared that this whole bunch but if we have 4 minus k alpha k minus 3 plus 2 k minus 3 alpha k minus 4 and then you will have Alpha k minus 1, 6 minus 2k minus 4 plus k, which can be simplified to 2 minus k plus 2 
plus alpha k minus 2, 4k minus 8 minus 2k plus 6. See what I did there? So we use the k minus 2 and k minus 3 terms to find the expression. So which means we will have two alpha terms. Well, this is not always guaranteed for every Hohenheim sequence, but then we have 2k minus 2 here. Now, we are not done yet. So let alpha is 1 minus 1 over n. So this means that ur minus ur plus 1, if we substitute alpha, we have alpha r minus 2 over n squared, r minus 1 plus r n minus n squared. So if r equals to n, then we would have these terms cancel out, then it would decrease. But then if we have r less than n, this will also surely decrease, therefore proving our conjecture. Hence, we have therefore proved that this conjecture is therefore true. Oh, by the way, if you are interested in reading up about such and such sequences, you can go check out the Pell sequence, one of my favorite number sequences, and one of my favorite ratios just stands on this sequence. It's called the silver ratio, and it occurs as the diagonal, the length of the diagonal of an octagon. And, shout out to CGP Grey here, hexagons are probably not the best gods, at least for me. It's, after all, the best gods up to our opinion. And just if we talk about such sequences, and you want to learn more about such and such sequences, you can go check out the OEIS or the Online Encyclopedia of Integer Sequences to find out about such and such sequences. Anyways, see you!